What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Echo Base Network. Today, we're talking about this Star Wars Outlaws and how this debacle continues to get bigger. Now, Matt, Star Wars gaming is huge. And Star Wars was part of the gold standard of gaming back during the LucasArts golden era. We're talking about great games, the KOTOR series, Dark Forces, Rogue Squadron, X-Wing, TIE Fighter, Shadows of the Empire. The list goes on and on and on and on and on. You know, and that's something that Star Wars has not been given us in the past, oh, I don't know, couple of decades maybe? Yeah. It's, they've really slowed down with the Star Wars gaming. We've, t we've discussed why. We get all the reasons why. But there's an issue now because Star Wars is being revived. Star Wars Outlaws comes out. It's met with all kinds of fan backlash. Totally get it. As a matter of fact, I understand it. Uh, they got this whole Forces female vibe going. Uh, you can see right here, this is the character, k Viss, that you will play in Star Wars Outlaws on the right, right here. And here is the model that was made. Looks nothing like the lady. The lady on the left is gorgeous. They uglified this girl, and there's been massive backlash because of this. Now, a lot of people aren't aware of Gamersgate and how you know they want to they want to appeal to everybody. So they made her ugly. Mm. They made her. They literally made the girl ugly. Well, that's not the end of the debacle with the whole forces female uglifying a beautiful lady and all of that stuff. Now we find out that something that. I believe we've seen a clip of, which you're going to talk about. There's a, you know, you see the trailer, Jabba the Hutt and Stormtroopers and all this stuff is in the trailer. It looks quite appealing for a Star Wars fan like myself, but it comes with a very heavy price tag. Like for you to be able to play this, you must buy the season pass. Mm. And if I'm not, if I'm not wrong... It's either $129 or $109 for you to be able to access Jabba's Gambit, the mission with Jabba the Hutt, at all. It's it's crazy I, on this point because in the trailer, there's not only do we see Jabba, but we see his palace. And you appear to be missioning in, in the palace. So I'm like, well, this is cool. You know, um, you know, Han Solo's on the wall in Carbonite. I mean, it's just reinforcing yeah. the time period. But you know you're running through which the is hallway. a really good thing by the way 100 percent, 100 percent, right and you're running through the hallways and all this and so i like i'm sure a lot of people just made the assumption that along the story you find yourself there and you have to do some things and so on now i think we're finding out it's a whole it's like a dlc right it's a it's an actual mission Yes. That's only included if you buy the premium game. So the game already costs seventy dollars. I don't know how much more premium <laughs> it needs to be. <laughs> Pretty dang <laughs> premium, dude. If you buy one of the premium versions, which has extra skins and other things for either one hundred and ten bucks, yeah, or you got to take the seventeen ninety nine a month season pass, I think, or or buy it all at once, and it ends up being one hundred and thirty dollars for you to play. <sighs> The Jabba mission, I mean, that's a crazy amount of money for a video game, in my opinion. That is insane. That is absolutely insane. That goes beyond what the normal what the normal gamer is going to be willing to spend. But dude, the fact the fact that I mean, is is it is it smart on their behalf? If if you're going to make something behind a paywall and jack the price up nearly a hundred percent. From seventy dollars to one hundred and thirty, why not have it be something that resonates very strongly yeah. with the older generation of fans who actually might just pay that amount? I don't like it. I don't like it. It's but is it not a shrewd business deal to say, oh, Han Solo in Carbonite, Jabba the Hut. You want to go to Jabba the Hut? You want to play this mission? You want to be this entrenched in the original trilogy? Because another part of the uh, the the backlash about the game was when we found out one of the settings is Kento Bite. Who who wants to go there? The main setting that is the setting of the boss that you're trying to number one. You're double crossing, stealing their money. 
that's their headquarters. And this character, the, the character that you're playing, I understand she also lives there. You know, she's been struggling, you know, to make an existence and all that. So the point being, everything you see in that trailer is about a whole bunch of characters that you have no history with. You have no, mm -hmm. I had to listen to the developers tell me about it because I was confused. And then finally you see Java, you see a few stormtroopers and it's like, okay, I know it's Empire Strikes Back between then and Return of the Jedi. Give me some familiarity. And now it costs me extra money. It's just stupid. Just stupid. Yeah, this definitely is going to give Ubisoft an even worse rep you know, than, than before. Now, here's something that the article says. Just as Kay is putting together a crew for the Canto Bite heist, which you just said, she receives a job from Jabba the Hutt himself, reads the description of the Season Pass exclusive mission. Turns out that ND5 owes Jabba a debt from years ago, and he has come to collect. The Season Pass will also give players unique cosmetics for Kay and Nyx. After launch, it will let you access two additional narrative expansions, although we don't know what these these will center around or when they will be released. So they're only telling us to access the Jabba's mission. Yeah. You, have to, you have to get the premium version. But you're going to get something else as well. Now... If it was going to be on the Job of the Hut, Jabba's Gambit, you know, level, I think they would probably already tell us that. Yep. Uh, the fact that they're not even telling us what the other one is, it's, I mean, you just told us it's $130 and you're not even going to tell us everything it includes? I mean, that's kind of wild to me. Um, now, the article goes on and says, while this is not a new practice for Ubisoft, it comes amid a renewed backlash against DLC, particularly uh, day one DLC in single player games. This yeah. kicked off with Dragon's Dogma 2, which launched alongside microtransactions, something typically found in live service games. This whole thing, man, it's like every time we get any type of good news for Star Wars, it's just never all good. There's always going to be something stupid attached to it. You know, the game looks awesome. Yeah. The, the cinematics. You know, cinematics are cinematics. Cinematics always look good. I mean, cinematics have looked good for 30 years. But uh, the fact that you could be in the Star Wars world with real stormtroopers running around, you're on an adventure. People love games like this. But there's a whole lot of negativity attached to this game. And if they don't start making better games, my man, if they don't start, if they don't start appeasing the Star Wars fans, what are we doing? How can you justify $130 for this? Star Wars is not what it once was. There, in 20, 2012, 2015, before The Force Awakens came out, when I knew the original cast was coming back to Star Wars, I would have bought this game for $130. Sure. I'd have been all in because the hype was real. But then they came out with their product, and the hype has died down. Star Wars, ladies and gentlemen, it's true. Star Wars is a brand that is struggling horribly. For many people, they say it's dead. It's not mm. dead. They keep making stuff. There's still, there's still life in it, but it is not healthy. Star Wars is sick. Not a good decision, Risman. Not at all, and I'll be very curious to see what the pre-orders look like for this game. I think this is another case of the trailers se severely ratioed. I mean, people... People no longer feel obligated to buy this stuff. And, and I, when I say obligated, I don't mean like someone was forcing them, but I mean as a fan. Must right? have. It, yes, it's Star Wars. I must have this. Mm -hmm. Got to get it pre-ordered. I want to play through it or I want to experience yes. it firsthand, first one. Now well, I, I hear a lot of people say they're either not going to fool with it at all or they're going to wait for it to go on sale, anticipating that that's going to happen quickly. Yeah, um, I, I think this is a really, really bad decision on their part from a pricing perspective. Couldn't agree more. Guys, most importantly, let us know in the comments what you think about the $130 price tag for Star Wars Outlaws. What are the other negatives? What are the other, What's other, other negativity associated with the game that you're feeling? Or are you buying this? Mm -hmm. Does it not matter to you? Is it worth it to you? Let us know in the comments. Very interested. Your comments may be in our next live show. We appreciate it very much. Thanks for being here. We are you are Echo Base Network. Coach, for the boss man over here, Matt Risman. see you guys on the next one. Take care.